So I don't recommend this journey to everyone, the right. entrepreneurial journey. It's They're really hard. They're not on. attracted to the, this though. They may, you know, right? Totally. It's, I mean, it's, you've got to make sure it's for you because it really puts you through the ringer, right? And, and you've gone through the same journey yourself as well. And I imagine lots of folks listening. It's the hardest, but most rewarding thing I've ever gotten to do. And I think all of our clients feel the same. And the one thing that I've learned, I've, the first piece of content I ever created was a podcast way back in the day. It was called Pattern Recognition. And basically I was a no-name kid and I just used this podcast. It was before podcasts were like a big thing, but I used it as an excuse to get to talk to people that like I had no business speaking to. So I would just, I would just send cold emails, like uh, 50 a week to all these billionaires. And like, luckily I'd get like one out of 50 would respond every week. And so I interviewed like 15 plus billion dollar founders at the time. And the, some of them were awesome. Some of them, I was kind of like, honestly surprised that they had built a company as large as they had. But there was one thing that was a key pattern between all of them. Like I did like 50 plus episodes of successful people. And it was just that they persisted and worked hard. They just never gave up. And so that's the one thing I tell all of our clients is on top of, if you sign up for Shan, like you get myself and the whole team here, here to support you. Like you can email us literally anytime and like, we'll help you like think about your content or think about like what products you should offer. But the one thing I say is like, that's going to separate you from like where you where you are today and where you want to be. Just like committing to the process and never, ever, ever, ever giving up. And I promise you, you'll get there. Yeah. I love that you look for that thread because I've done the same with all my messages of hope. I'm going to ask you for a message of hope before um, this is over. I ask everyone and I've compiled all the messages of hope into eight overarching themes. But the number one is we need community. We are mm. not meant to isolate. And you are talking to people that are working alone. And that's, it's such a problem now. And you and I could sit, if we sat here for long enough, we could feel like, no, we, we're best. Like, I mean, I, I feel really connected to certain people after I, and I don't feel isolated, even though I am alone in a room <laughs> talking to someone. And it's really important that we actually physically see each other. It is, we are a, society. We are meant totally. to be together. And it is, that is the number one message that and service, which you come from a place of service. And I love before we got on, you said, how can I best help you? When I asked, how can I best support you? <laughs> you know, and so we're both and Lisa J who uh, recommended that I talk to you. She comes from completely a place of service, which is why she is so successful. So I just think coming from, you know, looking for those threads of why people do so well, it's just so important. So people that live in fear and it, whatever you look for, you're going to find. And people that live mm. in fear, then you know, look for the good, look for the successful, you know, keep your eye, whatever you tell yourself, you're right. You know, all of those things. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just so good. So somebody who's just, they're at that job that everyone else is, oh my gosh, you're so lucky and you don't feel it. And you know, there's something else you should be doing. What do you tell them? Oh, walk before you run, tiptoe. People yeah. get so terrified of the process of like going out on their own. It's like, oh my God, and you like quit my job tomorrow and do figure out all these 15,000 things. Well, the beauty of the internet today is like side hustles are awesome. And maybe you like live your whole life doing a very like stable corporate job and you have a bunch of cool side hustles and projects on the side, but there's so much safety in like, Hey, you know, where you want to be in the future. You've got this awesome thing that let's not take for granted now. Like you can do a solid job there, but realize like, Hey, this is my time to invest in myself. And we've only got one life. You should do that. And so all you got to do is just like incrementally try things, like start posting those first few pieces of content, or like start thinking about what is your first digital product. And like, you can, there's so much free content online teaching you how to do all this for free. Like literally the, the education on YouTube out there that's free is like more valuable than any Stanford business school education you get nowadays. I, I truly mean that as it relates to like the knowledge. And so just start small and commit like, Hey, I'm going to do an hour every day to progress Within a month's time, you'd be shocked by how much progress you can make. It's so true. You don't have to invent the wheel. You and never do. With no. AI, it's like even easier than it was yeah. a month ago and a month before that. So totally. it's you still have to put your own personality in it. But uh, yeah, it's amazing. So what about with all the shiny object syndrome? How do you help people mm -hmm. stay focused or... What would you tell someone? <laughs> You're laughing. Anybody who can't hear him laughing, he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 
it's tough because we we all have attention spans of goldfish now because of social media and short form content. And we all have like ADHD to some degree because of technology. I think part of the shiny object syndrome is how we ultimately get to our like fully aligned path. Like some of that chaos is okay to like, you, cause you got to figure out what you like and you don't like. And when you first start out, if you're going to be, if you're going to be one of the lucky few, like I'm going to do this and this is exactly the vision I want. And it works out perfectly for you. That's awesome. But for me, I, I think I even had like a lot of shiny object syndrome around like what kind of career I wanted and then like what business I kind of wanted to build and, and all this kind of stuff. And so I'd say as long as you're, you're very intentional about your core values of what you want to do. So it's like, Hey, like I want to build financial independence for myself. I want to serve other human beings. I want to build community, whatever that is. Then it's like, okay, as long as we're guardrailed on that path, some of the shiny object syndrome will teach us new things and just be cool life experiences. But I think your intuition will always know at the end of the day, like, Hey, like, is this something you feel guilty about? Cause it's not the right thing. And something like I need to like careen back onto my path. But eventually if you're like still on that path and persisting through those core values and having those as a guardrail, I think you'll be okay long-term. Yeah. And I also think meditation is, I, I'm so huge on meditation. Yeah. I just think it keeps us so centered and balanced. It doesn't mean shiny object syndrome is in that thing, believe me, or, or like us all over, but it, it gives me balance at least. So, well, yeah. I'm curious, Lauren, if, if I can ask you a question yeah. about your relationship with meditation is I've always recognized the value of it and I try my best to do it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But the reality of that is maybe I'll get in like a 10, 15 minute session every few days, even though it's like, I know it's good. It's like eating your spinach. So I'm curious for you when you're like so busy living, like you've got your work and your family and your community and love, like everything going on and like everything's stressful. I'm curious how you've made time or gotten yourself to actually like take the time to like sit down and meditate. Cause mm -hmm. I, I struggle with that all the time. Um, I give myself permission, even if it's, and I was just talking to my daughter and a friend about it last night at dinner and, and they texted me, they did it uh, even three to five minutes. So what? Just to do an in and out breath of three to five minutes. And it is amazing how much that can center just an in and out breath and just tell your watch or your phone, hey, I don't want to say S-I-R-I -I because it's going to respond at the moment. <laughs> yeah. you know, I have it but um, and just to set a timer for three minutes or five minutes, so, you, know, you can start there. And it is amazing how centered I feel just mm. concentrating on my breath for uh, my in and out breath. And when the in breath becomes an out breath, the turnaround of the in to the out, just do an in breath and now out and then in and out. And do you notice when the in breath becomes an out breath? Yeah. Which is kind of cool. That's super cool. And to do that for three to five minutes. And, and I give myself permission to do, to say that short of a meditation is just fine. Um, and so I do 10 minutes. If that's all I can do yesterday, I did a nine minute. I realized on my watch, I go, I, I set the timer for nine minutes because I realized that's how much time I had before I had to go. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's okay. I give myself permission. I give myself grace. Oh, that's another thing I learned. Put my hand on my chest. That's a very self-compassionate mm. way. And I, I never knew that. I think of all the things I've never been taught. And that's just so simple. And it gives yourself compassion. It's a breathing in and... No matter what you're feeling, you're that's fine. And I still, I always talk about, I, I Google feelings chart because I didn't grow up talking about my feelings. And I'm like, yeah. there's so many. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. So I'll Google feelings chart. And my husband, I'll, I'll be like, that's not a feeling. And I'll make him do it too. Like, I don't know. Like, we don't know. We're, just, we're all learning. This is all like school. Okay. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and we just laugh and try to be like, oh, you because know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> people i i just i you know that's one thing about getting older is i just like i don't care what you think about me <laughs> it's none of my business anyway but i just don't even care and i love that uh, so yeah <laughs>